this little creek here is hateful run. According to the GPS I've been using, I started it a distance of 1.65 miles to the uh, airplane wreck site, and I'm down to 1.1 miles to go. It says an hour and 23 minutes because I've stopped here. I started about 9 o'clock. It says I'll be there close to 11, but that doesn't include stops. So if you go up Hateful Run, according to my GPS, it stays straight so far, which the map showed that. Let me uh, just get you to the airplane wreck site from 1995. There's a graphical representation. You see that curve? That's meaning you're heading straight up, basically. Hateful is, Run. Uh, thick in here. It's not thick right here, but I know when we get closer to the top in the spruce it'll be bad. So we'll go another half mile, another third of the distance, take a break there, and then hopefully the plane. Okay, we've made it uh, two-thirds of the way. We're 0.54 away. Starting to get into the uh, spruce pond trees here. So we're two-thirds, and we're pretty close in elevation. We're above 4,000. We're going to get about 4150 and then drop back down a little in the next half mile. And right there, uh, what I put in on the GPS was the start of the debris field, which is about 500 feet long. There's a piece of the aircraft right there. And just to show you how bright it is right here, uh, if you see that tree right there that's broke, that's probably one of the first trees he hit. And here's a few more. Look at the tops of these where it killed this. And it looks like all the way through here, it's nice and bright and open compared to, let me look back here and see how dark it is in the woods. But the GPS took me exactly to it. So we're going to be hunting around here for the next half hour, hour or so. Try to get up to the main part. And look, that is the tip of a wing. It's a nice piece of aluminum there, very light. Here's that dead tree. Whether that has something to do with it or not, I'm not 100% sure. However, I don't know if you can see in the woods over here. Yeah, you pilots probably know what this part is. To me, it's either part of the flap or an air line. Probably hit a tree right there. Either the flap or the airline, I'm not sure which. I'm gonna go with the airline. It looks like maybe that was the tip of the wing that got hit there. Another piece here. Almost guaranteed to be a wing. It looks like part of a wing. And I see another piece of metal there. Over here. Yeah, that's wing. You know that black part. That's part maybe you, um, you know, you step up on. So, trying to see which way that goes. Does it go this way? I'm gonna say it's this way by the treetops. Yep, there's a paint scheme, blue stripe on white. Well, it's grown up since I was here back in 2001 and early 2002. I'm that much further up here, big pieces of debris here. That's the bottom of the engine, one of the two engines on this plane, where that venting is there. So he slammed one of his engines early on here. Clearly that. Let's see here. Tail, maybe? I know it's hard with the sun and the shadows here. Yeah, this poor kid. He wasn't very old. His name was Colin Campbell. He had about 4,500 hours, flight hours in, so he's well experienced. Just made a mistake, unfortunately. The day that this accident happened, he had dropped a passenger off at the Braxton County Airport. 
I was heading back to Lynchburg, the conditions were deteriorating. At Lewisburg, for example, the it was overcast. You could see up to 900 feet above the ground. Now, here in the mountains, this was probably totally occluded where you couldn't see the tops here. And had he actually been at the correct altitude, or his altimeter was set correctly, I think he would have cleared this mountain. Although the highest mountain between here and Lynchburg is 4,600. I don't know if that was actually on his route, though. But I'm just filming this to show you how thick it is here. Okay, here's a piece over here I just noticed. Yeah, a lot of debris here. I don't remember how far up the main fuselage is. Piece here. Mother Nature's taking it over, burying it. The, the big piece is sitting up on a huge rock. That's my memory of it. Okay, let's see what this is here. Wing or back part of the tail? Like leading back hmm. to the tail? I'm not 100% sure what part that is there. This is looking down. Back the way he came. See how it's open here? Where he clipped these treetops? Came in. That's been horrific. You'll see how far up here, about 500 feet, is where he ended up, where the cockpit was. I have to search for the plane. I, it was in late November of uh, 95 that this accident happened. It wasn't found in 2001. I even flew several flights and was with people on several flights looking for him, trying to find, you know, the accident site. If people would have just focused on his actual line of flight, because he flew in a straight line from Braxton to Lynchburg, and that's where he was, that's where this accident is. We searched everywhere else thinking, oh, he was trying to stay below the mountains. He went in this valley or that valley, you know, so he could, until he got his clearance. That wasn't the case. I think this material, I'm gonna put my hand on it, is the bladder to a fuel tank. See a propeller up here. I have one of those blades at home. Hmm. Now one of the three blades is missing right there. It's probably the one I have. It's much more curled than that is. I think they determined there was nothing mechanically wrong with the plane and the propellers were moving when he hit. That type of bend, I don't know. But I see more and more debris here, so we're getting close in this thicket. This might have been part of the cockpit here, the way that triangle-shaped window is. Tore out right here. Here's some electronics of some type. Oh, what a horrific accident. Yeah, landing gear. One of them. I don't know if that's the nose. I bet that is the way they where that's at. The nose gear. Now uh, here's a big piece of the wing here. You could see this air lawn right here. Let me put my foot on. That's that's looking at that I would say what was back there was probably a flap, which is right in the center more. Oh no, this is the tail. Okay. Just dawned on me. This is the tail section right here. Some type of electronics right here. Radio probably. Here's that huge rock in the main part of the wreckage where he was at. Just terrible. Right there's the other prop with all three blades intact. So that other one was one that I uh, hiked that heavy prop out of here. About 60 pounds of prop and instruments after they had re abandoned this. Here's one, another landing gear. Clearly off the wing because it's underneath the engine bay.
I hope that bell's not irritating you, but I have it on there because it's springtime. I've already had one episode with a bear cub and a large bear prince. Okay. And I could tell you what you're looking at here, which doesn't look like much. This is the cockpit. You could just see how mangled it was. Maybe hit this rock on impact. And it flipped the fuselage around because the plane, that body of the plane you're looking at there, is actually facing back in the direction he came. So it hit it and spun it around when it came and landed on this rock. <sighs> Engine right here, left engine most likely. But right in here is where the cockpit was, and it's just all the instruments were in here, just obliterated on impact. The poor kid stood no chance whatsoever. Now, had there been any passengers back in there? Who knows? I don't know what the impact would have done with passengers in there, but those couple of those passenger seats are basically intact. <laughs> Looks like animals have been chewing on them. There's the propeller. Let me tell you, the blades on these three here and the uh, two back that you just saw look totally different than what you're going to see of the one that I that was detached that I hiked out of here. That's the front of the airplane right there. This is going towards the back. Here's where someone had taken apart the engine. I think someone came up here and took a camshaft out of it, believe it or not. Trying to salvage it. See some cylinders here. Boy, that's been turned up not too long ago. More cylinders. Yeah, look, see, it's where they took the engine apart and the camshaft's missing. This is about 75 feet past. So this engine got launched way up here. This might, I'm not sure right here what all this is. This is about uh, 25 feet behind the plane off to the right as you're walking up. Again, we're near the uh, back of the plane since it's facing the opposite way of which it came. That's the cockpit that's just obliterated there. This is the, uh, where the tail section would have connected. I'm going to climb up here. JD in 2020, JA 2021, ACCB. So obviously other people have been up here. That's what I'm saying about the uh, seats. Could a passenger survived? I don't know. But clearly the pilot was killed on impact. Uh, maybe a final word about the uh, pilot, Colin Campbell. They never found any human remains. But the uh, people who come up here, and this was found in November of 2001, almost six years to the date that the crash happened. It took that long. They had right here in the... Uh, on the fourth floor, right next to where the cockpit was, blue flags, a bunch of them. And I think if I, if you watch that 2001 video that I did, those blue flags are there. I think that's where they found bits and pieces of his clothing. That sadly, I'm sure animals picked it apart. What was left? Right there are the throttle controls that would control the engines right there. It's almost two hours to get up here. What are I see the other engine here, or what's left of it. Like I said, there have been people up here that tried to salvage some parts. Yeah, there's some cylinders. That engine's been taken apart as well. Now, I'm up here on May 20th, or 21st, I believe. <laughs> when you're retired, the days don't matter, but it's somewhere around there. Uh, you see all the greenery. Uh, the times I've been up here before, 
twice in November of 01 and then the spring turkey season of 02. And there wasn't as much vegetation, so it wasn't as bad trying to find this. Yeah, this is that tail section. When I paired in the back, this would have been connected back there. I remember there was a piece laying up here that had the tail number on it, but I don't know where that is or if it's upside down. I just can't remember. Well, that's that. A lot of hiking. 1.69 miles in a straight line. I guarantee I zigzagged enough to probably do over two miles to get up here. Elevation gained from 2,900 and some odd feet to 42. And then once you hit the 42, it drops back down. This uh, accident site is at 4,050 feet. Let's see if I could get out of here in one piece. <laughs> Just see how thick it is. This is why this was so difficult to find. And, okay, I think the evening that the accident happened, it put down up here probably over a foot of snow. And this is a white airplane. And I could tell you, the, the gentleman who found it, um, Mr. McCourt from up in Bolaire, uh, Webster County, West Virginia, um, he was hiking up here, searching for it, maybe the next day or two after, and doing grid searches up in here where they thought maybe it was. And oh, they were probably within 100 to 200 yards of it. But it, it was just so thick they didn't see it, especially with all the snow on. So six years went by until this was discovered. And this is 2023. Almost 28 years now. And I'm almost 22 years since I've been here. After the aircraft was found in November of 2001, almost six years to the day that the accident occurred, I uh, went up to the site after I was given the uh, GPS coordinates found the wreckage which stretched over 500 feet and I found where the cockpit was and this set of instruments was just laying loose along with the one propeller that I packed out of there all of this told was at least 50 to 60 pounds that propeller is extremely heavy and you notice how it's curved that's general indication that the propeller was operating at the time of impact and they did determine there was nothing mechanically wrong with the airplane. The pilot just stayed too low under bad deteriorating weather conditions and he missed the top of the mountain where the aircraft was located, the wreckage, probably by about 200 to 300 feet. If he had just climbed further and not worried about getting into the clouds, he, we, I wouldn't be filming this obviously. But I'll show you a couple of the uh, instruments that indicate and what he was doing. The aircraft was found almost in a direct line from Braxton County to Lynchburg, Virginia, which is where he was going. And that heading is roughly around 140, the southeast heading. And if you look at this instrument, he had this dialed in at, looks like about 135. Okay, another indication. Here's the airspeed indicator. Might be hard to see with the glare there, but this, it's pointing to about 160. So that's about the speed he was flying. This was a twin engine Cessna 414 on impact. This is the RPM manifold indicator. One of them, the right engine was showing 2400, the left 29. That, that's just what I found, and I don't know, you know what that means, because if you go over here to the RPMs, they're both fully basically set next to zero there. So those just uh, fell back after the accident occurred. Now the altimeter, which would show how high above the ground he was, when I found it, it was at this reading 4,600. Now the accident report says the, that altimeter was indicating around 4,000 feet. And the wreckage of the aircraft was found at 
4,050 feet. Okay. You see if those needles had slapped the back of that indicator, leaving a mark to let them know maybe whether he had his altimeter set incorrectly because he flew from uh, somewhere in Virginia. I don't know if it was Roanoke or wherever he picked up the passenger that he dropped off at the Braxton Airport. Flew from a high pressure to a low pressure. And there's a saying, pilots, uh, if you fly from high to low, look out below. It means your altimeter might be off unless, you're given, unless you uh, correct the barometric pressure by turning the dial that uh, you see those little numbers way off to the... Uh, at the 230 position there. So that's some of the things that I pulled off of that uh, wreckage that you saw.